Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you guys do. Never goes unnoticed. I hope you're doing all right. I may you stay blessed. Um, please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. Just give me the name or the link down below and I'll check it out. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. We go by Fanny and Jesse, our vlogging channel. Funny and Jesse 2.0 subscribe and enjoy the content that we put out. So today I'm going to be reacting to the shakiest Marvel movie. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. You might be wondering, why is Ishan in a questionable place? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I'm talking about a questionable movie. And that movie is called Thor, Love and Thunder. And the story is pretty much about a supervillain called Gore, the God's Butcher, and his reason for going after the gods. I mean, in WWE, you probably heard of Randy Orton, the legend killer. This guy's flipping, taking it to another bloody level, mate. <laughs> yeah, he's turning to a God's Butcher. But what's interesting is to see why. No, that's a gen, yeah. <laughs> The Quranly app, subscription cheaper than Netflix, encouraging Quran reading, modern, engaging and fun, download it today. Why is he now become a God's butcher? Well, that's because he prayed to the gods because his daughter wasn't well, she had bad health. And then, you know what happened? She died. And then when she died, he, you know, got angry and then started going on a rampage and started killing these gods. Like, who are these gods? You know what I'm saying? I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking like, come on, man, it's just a movie. I mean, don't take Thor and his hammer seriously. Like, okay, maybe your opinion, you're entitled to it. But when you speak to the psychologists, to the sociologists, none of them say that the movies, like they have absolutely no impact on you whatsoever. Like the movies do have an impact. In fact, you can see the studies on the screen that say that movies can have an impact on your belief. Oh yes, your belief. Yeah, it can have an impact on stereotypes, how you view certain people and your ideals. In fact, the study that you guys can see says that people that watch the movie saying negative things about elders, they left with a negative perception of elders as well. Here is a another study by Baylor University and what they found was people that watched R-rated movies, they stopped going to the church. Their religiosity decreased. Now hang on a minute right here. What's the correlation here? Yeah, what's the correlation? It's because you've got a different set of ideals now and those ideals contradict what you're being taught. Yeah, so again, there's, there's an issue in the mind. So this is why a philosopher called Theodore Adorno said that magazines, radio, because he was from, uh, you know, a while back. So you can apply the same with social media, movies. In fact, he, I think he mentioned movies as well. And he said that their whole purpose is to distract you from understanding yourself and from altering politics. SubhanAllah. So profound. It's not some, you know, Muslim guy or some religious guy. Theodore Adorno, a philosopher. You'll find him in the literature. He's saying this, watching this stuff distracts you, makes you busy that you can't learn about yourself and alter the politics. You know, you've probably heard of breads and circuses, the Roman Colosseum, that if people are too busy watching people fight and doing all that sort of stuff, they're not going to be worried about changing politics. They're not going to be worried about what the emperor is doing. And another thing I wanted to mention was what sort of gods are being presented in this movie? Selfish? Weak? I mean, here's a guy who couldn't look after his own daughter. Yeah, his own daughter passed away, but he's got enough power to start going around killing gods. I mean, the irony, the irony, and how ridiculous. And guys, this is an issue that I hear amongst Muslims as well. They have a very low level understanding. When they were young, they were told if you drink Zamzam, -zam, your dua is accepted. And then if you do this, your dua is accepted. And then they started going in their studies and then they didn't upgrade their understanding of the religion. They're still on a primary level understanding of religion, but subhanAllah, they've reached the university age. So you have to upgrade your Islam as well and upgrade in the sense that your understanding, go to study circles, 
learn, do courses, increase your understanding. And if you would know, you'd, you'd be aware of a hadith in Musnad of Ahmad that says if you make dua, one of three things happen. Number one, either your dua is accepted straight away. Number two, either you're rewarded for it on the day, uh, well, in the hereafter. Or number three, a calamity that was supposed to befall you because of that dua is repelled. So subhanAllah guys, a lot of us have this understanding that we're the master and Allah forbid, you know, astaghfirullah, Allah is the slave. Like oh, I've done my dua now, it's like a, a business transaction. I've done this now, you need to uh, answer my dua mate. You know what I'm saying? So of course that is absolute nonsense. It's a slave, a master relationship. Yeah, it's up to Allah when he accepts it. Oh no, 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 Allah has to accept my dua now. Excuse me, who are you bruv? Who are you? How dare you? How dare you dictate to Allah when He is going to accept your dua and your prayer? It does not work like that. You are the slave, Allah is the master. And you know what the beauty here is? We have the pixel, Allah has the picture. Oh yes, we have the pixel, Allah has the picture. And that's why guys, SubhanAllah, Allah can just discard us, but there's actually khair in it. Allah looks after us and He knows sometimes we ask for stuff and it's just going to be madness in it. So Allah will not accept that dua. But we're like kids, yeah? No, no, no. Yeah. So guys, the analogy is that sometimes we're making dua. Somebody might be like, Yo, my man's making dua. Allah's not even listening to him. Like, what is this? What sort of God is he? Whoa, 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 whoa. Relax. Calm down, calm down. It's like the parent who's trying to get his baby off milk so the baby can enjoy fruits, meats, vegetables, dishes and cuisines. But because the person watching is just looking at the crying, they're not looking at the bigger picture. And because of that, they just focus on the child crying. But the mother can see ahead. The father can see ahead and they're like, no, the child needs to learn. But the child needs the milk. No, the child doesn't need the milk. The child needs to learn. This is a valuable lesson, yeah? And then after that process passes, then the child is able to enjoy. Imagine a 25 year old guy and the only thing that he can have with his mates at the restaurant is milk because the parents didn't take him off milk. Like it's a mad one, isn't it? So guys, this is very important because this is an issue with a lot of people. They say, oh, make a dua, Allah doesn't accept, so uh, stop praying. SubhanAllah, what is this? But I wanted to mention a few more things as well, guys. Like the, the University of Miami had a study to say that if somebody got hurt and they got offended, they were better equipped to deal with situations to do with anger and unhappiness. So there was another study to say that people after 9-11 in that area had become more grateful, they had more hope and they had greater teamwork as well. Another study, it actually talks of physical illness. People that have physical illnesses, they become more fair. They have more courage. They become more funny. Yeah, this is these studies are mentioned in a book called 59 Seconds by Richard Wiseman. So I can give you loads of these studies, guys. But the point that I'm trying to say is hardships and problems make us stronger. That's that's pretty much it. Were it not for hardships, it would not build our character. So hardships make us stronger. They give us the equipment to deal with loads of different issues in life and to help other people as well. Let's leave it there. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum. One thing I enjoy doing is actually watching movies and as talk, discussing them afterwards, you know, like what's the whole point of this and that? Why did they make it seem like this and not this? I love discussing anything that I watch, anything and everything. Uh, like the thought he's brought about, it was actually an interesting video, nice, not video, nice movie. Uh, there was some comedy in it and everything and um, you really wonder here's a man that's not a god not a what he's shown to have to to yield this much power through the sword he possesses and manages to kill one or two kings and he just causes some sort of fear in this world that Thor and the rest are living in you know people are scared for their lives Many kings die, many people lose their homes. Then what after that? Why is this person shown in such a light? Is it that the gods, because a god compared to any other thing, should be more powerful and should defeat any evil that rises against them. But that was not the case in that 
movie somehow because anyway in the end Thor if you haven't watched it in the end Thor defeats the uh, the guy uh, and I, I, while watching this I was just thinking I wish he this guy the smart Jana guy could also talk about movies like the woman king that one also had some some subliminals in it you know I love such such videos and um the point of the here the matter here is that um whether we like it or not movies are selling something they're selling some form of ideology whatever the case is and if you're not careful and you agree with everything that you watch then they're conditioning you to accept what they're showing you you have to criticize each and everything that you watch why did they say the woman doesn't need a man why are they saying like when we watch superhero movies why why are they showing that women can beat men all those things are questions we should ask ourselves you have to be open open your mind to the stuff that they're trying to do there's always something they're selling so just be careful as you watch this don't say yes to everything yes enjoy the movie just don't say yes to everything that you watch think for yourself that's why you have a mind of your own don't let someone else think for you otherwise this was interesting to watch let me know what you guys actually think about this video if there's anything you want me to react to let me know down below give me the name or the link just comment it down below and i'll check it out make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video